My name is Mary Ann Gleisner. I am president of the Jefferson Historical Society. We are here located in the lower level of City Hall. There's a front door is on Gardner Street, right down from the old railroad station. Or you can reach us by coming through the library in the long hallway down the steps or City Hall and down the steps. We're open on Wednesdays from 10 until 12, Sundays 1 until 4, and by appointment, and I express that, and by appointment, because you have family reunions, you have people coming in from out of town. One time we had a group coming in from California, Illinois, and Sullivan, and they were celebrating their anniversaries and wanted to be in among our old bridal outfits. So we are available. If you have just anybody wants to come through, please call us. Um, and get a hold of us. They can call me at my home, 920-674-6463. They can call any of the members or just call down here, but we are not here every day to answer the phone. But please try and get a viewing. We get people in here. They say, oh, I just stopped in for a moment and an hour and a half later, they're still looking. They cannot believe all the beautiful things that we have here. Uh, we are celebrating the 175th anniversary of Jefferson, the founding of this area. So we did have our birthday party. We had all the children from kindergarten through fifth grade enter a poster contest. And we had beautiful, we have budding artists here in Jefferson, so keep an eye out for them. Uh, there will be more things going on. We're in the process, we'll be having another meeting and we're trying to find different ideas. We don't want to have the same old birthday party. We want to do different things for the city of Jefferson. Uh, the winners of the poster contest are being placed in all the businesses downtown with their ribbons. So we hope you get to see them. Please just come to Jefferson and see what we have to offer. These are the buildings that were built by Elmer Waldman with the help of his wife. Um, these are the downtown area buildings. It's like the squares around the downtown. These are from before 1900 and these are after what they look like after 2000. Along with these houses and buildings you can go to number 49 and you can look them up in the book here. And we'll go to 49 just because it's there. And he, it will tell every business, when it was built, every business so far that they have found that was in that building up until 1991 for this particular building. So it all shows all the different business people that have been in there. And uh, we just lost Elmer recently, so this is an extra special showing of his buildings. He also has the churches and the prominent buildings in town. All of the history in this book was taken out of the newspapers, the Jeffersonian or the Jefferson County Daily Union, and they have been working for probably another two years. If you go on the Jefferson website, the museum, you can go into the gojefferson.com and the museum will be coming up and then you can get the same history I have on a DVD or on a CD that Elmer did for us. So that's a way of checking the history. We are in the lower level of City Hall, which was the old police department. And you can see we left this on the wall. This is where they did the, the incoming bad guys. And this was their whole uh, recording area. They had a camera here. And this was it. They had a little stack in the corner of shelving, and that was how they brought the prisoners in. And that was the whole idea of needing a new police department. And so in this case, we have things that relate to our police department. My father was a game warden here for 32 years. I got him in there. And over here is a specific gun that was used in the riots when they blew up the lab in Madison and a man was killed. He wasn't supposed to be there, but he was doing extra work. And this is the beanbag pump gun. It actually has a bullet to set the charge off, but it only fires a beanbag. And I guess it's quite a wicked 
uh, gun. Also over here we have from the courthouse some of the, the um, keys for the courthouse that were locked up. So it's quite interesting. Once you get in here it's sort of hard to get out and you can't do it in 20 minutes and see everything. This particular section is dedicated to Morris Kiltz. He's one of the longtime people here in Jefferson. He collected beer labels. He had over 4 million beer labels when he died. And these are what I found laying outside the van after they were given out to Oldenburg. Uh, on the Ohio and Kentucky border, they supposedly had the U.S. largest beer memorabilia. And I found these out there when they, they literally packed these in a cargo van. Where you see in the comic and the movies, where you push your door shut to keep the stuff in and slam the other door and try and get it shut. And the things that laid on the ground were actually these labels. And these are all Wisconsin labels. And these are uh, put in holders like this because we hosted German Fest in Milwaukee one year. And I'd have people come up and say, hey, we never had a brewery in our town. That's not from our town. I said, you go back and read your history. Every little town probably had four or five breweries. But these are the ones that actually did commercial. So we're very proud of these. This is sort of an interesting um, item. Not only this wheelchair, but this... Uh, this here is a hammock made out of corn husks. And this came as a donation from Urena Beanfang, who is a benefactor of ours. She actually gave us some money to build the display room out in the hallway. And so she wanted a safe place for her hammock. And so this was made by a couple of girls that came to visit their grandma and grandpa. And they entered this in the Jefferson County Fair and it took first place. Now when you feel it, it feels like leather, but it actually is corn husks. Here we have a wheelchair and it is the neatest thing because it's a hand pump wheelchair. And it just turns on a dime. I don't know why they don't make them today. This was owned by Popcorn Joe. And he was a famous guy downtown on the main street. He always had his popcorn stand. He was an invalid since he was very young. I don't know if it was a birth defect or what. But he actually used this. And it's a hand pump. We let the kids from school ride it just to show what can be done with this. This thing will turn on a dime. It's just, I don't know why they don't make them nowadays. Because there certainly are a lot of people that can't use their legs. But this is from, um, he opened his popcorn stand in 1897. And he was on Main Street for very lots of years, lots of years. This is, of course, all our toys. And uh, lots of our uh, cameras, old cameras. And we actually have a uh, glass plate from a Leonard Vogel, who was a photographer in Jefferson. And hopefully one of these days we're going to get able to look at those plates and actually see if there's something printable on them. Also are the Allen Theater, Opera House Theater, all of them. Here the tickets are five cents to go to the movie. And of course we have old, old toys all over the place. We have a lots of sports memorabilia and lots of old pictures of the teams and we have a lot of people doing research and of course we add to this and exchange pictures here Don Hudson from the Green Bay Packers was here one time as one of the speakers at the uh, 1945 April 19 1945 and he was one of the speakers at the program sports program so we have one of his folders in here I don't know if you can see this at all down below. Tramp art. We have a cross made out of tramp art. And tramp art was something that was done by maybe a migrant farmer that came in and stayed, put in the crops and stayed to harvest the crops. So he stayed at the farmer's house. And, or sometimes it was someone on board ship. And they would take these old wooden cigar boxes such as this and glue them together and then carve down and that's what you made tramp art out of. This cross that's in here right now 
has no nails and no glue. It is just like a Chinese puzzle put together. The Jefferson Historical Society has uh, records of the cemetery. If you're looking for a specific grave, we have them up to 1998. All the cemeteries around Jefferson. So if you're looking for somebody in the Greenwood Cemetery, you can come down here and we can tell you exactly what row and where they are at the grave site. And we just recently received this book and I've been working uh, helping with the Jefferson Cemeteries um, out at Countryside. So we got a supplement. It was called the Poor Farm and so they didn't even give a name to a person. They would say a man age 42 died. And that was it and they gave them a number, number 12. And so we have been researching the book and we actually have found quite a few of the cemetery burials. And so we have them down here also. So if you're looking for cemetery information, trying to find where your relatives are, we probably have it down here. A lot of people come, they lost their Civil War uh, relatives and they only had, they died at the poor farm and they only had a number for them. So now we're being able to find some of these names. In this research room, you can bring any of the old atlases out and open them up or take them out in the hallway. You can't leave the building with them. But in 1958, I believe, they changed the names of the streets and the numbering of the buildings. So anything before 1958, we can help you find them. We have to f figure out what the new numbering system is. A lot of us local people actually know you tell me the house and who lived there and I can sort of give you the new address. Also, these books over here, scrapbooking was not something new, folks. People kept scrapbooks all the time and I believe we have, we're up to at least 69 scrapbooks. People said, oh, my grandma kept this scrapbook. We don't know what to do with it, so they gave it to us. Vicki Schicker, our curator, we're going back to her again. She has looked at every single picture and article in the book. She has an alphabetical order, so you can just look under your name here and it'll tell you what book to go to and how to find the information. If there was a business in Jefferson and they gave away, which was a very popular thing to do at Christmas time or a birthday time, give you some kind of premium. And these are all layered in here. So you have to come through and just look and see if you can find something from your aunt or uncle or your grandpa's business. Over here is a silver medal awarded to the R. Hager Brewing Company in 1904 at the St. Louis Universal Exposition and they won this medal for their beer. And their slogan was the beer that made Milwaukee jealous. So this is a new donation from uh, Mr. Stoppenbach from Milwaukee and uh, we're very proud of that. And of course Richard Hager is one of our members from the direct descendant of the Hager Brewery and he had never seen the medal. So that was exciting for him. All of these items are items that have to do with businesses. The Jefferson Motorcycle was made here from 1911 to 1914. We're always looking for new information on that. Slewfoot Haberman has actually built a motorcycle and you can see it here. He went all over the country finding parts for this. He got the motor uh, out of California, which that man in California bought it from a man in Waukesha. So they're trying to, he's got one built completely for show, we'll never have gas or oil in it. It is a beautiful showpiece. And of course he makes signs for a living and he could actually go inside the gas tank of this motorcycle and find the true color. So this is actually the true color of the motorcycle. It was the overspill color from the paint. He's also building one to ride but I don't think it's going to be as fancy as that. And here are all different businesses. Uh, we have presidents. The kids like to hear about the presidents because they study the presidents. We had Teddy Roosevelt here on a whistle stop. Uh, we had a lot of different ones come through because they would come from Watertown, come through on the little trains, 
go down to the train station you can see all the people this was big entertainment they came down and they listened to their either thank you speech or gonna run for office speech over here this menu came out of uh, Redding's restaurant a lot of people remember Redding's restaurant the building was torn down to make the bridge wider when they replaced the highway 18 bridge but these are all businesses that used to be here and are now long gone uh, over here is all different businesses and we get things in all the time this particular thing just came in and this was uh, Armour and Priscilla Green used to run the sweet shop was I when I was a teenager growing up and this came in from South Carolina they know that the things should be preserved but they don't know what to do with them so they send them to us this is the Jefferson Fire Department uh, display and of course women were not allowed in the fire department at one time so when they would have costume balls and things it was the men that dressed up we have lots of wonderful pictures one of them is still out where the men actually did the plays and they were all in drag and you know some of them guys were pretty good looking for a woman here is actually a leather fireman's bucket and what what they would do we line the kids up and we say now here's the guy he's taking the water out you hand it to him and we'd pass it all down and see how much water you think was left in that bucket well of course there wasn't too much to throw on the fire Jefferson was first a lot of time in the hook and ladder competition and over here this happens to be my sister Kathy Nelson and um, Morgan and Myers came when they bought the old fire station and made it into a business and they came and they said we found this flag they had it in a bag and you touched it and the silk just disintegrated in your hand and my sister Kathy all the embroidery work was still there very good but not the silk it took two and a half years and she finally got has the flag remade two specifications and it's hanging in the fire department and if you go up there you'll see it's a two-sided flag it's just beautiful and of course that was the flag they would take in all the parades because they were number one anything we couldn't find a specific area for we put in the general store and these are all different items you can the old irons the old uh, toasters we had a man that collected toasters came in and he said you have a toaster that was made one year and it was made for the world's fair and he said and here it is and it's a beautiful toaster the toast went in upright like this you could just keep feeding and it would go through and toast the toast we have um, vacuum cleaners this is a 1907 pump vacuum cleaners when we do do the tours for the kids and all the schools we invite all the schools to bring their kids through and we ask the kids how many of you kids vacuum at home and they'll say you know raise their hand and I'll say how would you like to vacuum like this and it, it actually gives them idea of what vacuum feels like because you can feel the air so of course this didn't last very long because electricity became very popular this here is a very unique spool for threads and cottons they would be put in here and this was in the Jefferson department store this was their cash register and on the side are some little buttons to open it and that's the only way you can get it open and of course listen to that bell it's wonderful and they could tell if anybody was fooling around with their till but if you look at this you can see how many people took out money they just actually wore this down just from their hands this is actually a religious item that came from Bavaria with my grandfather uh, grandpa Weissman and this is actually has in here if you get a real good look at it everything leading up to the crucifixion of Christ so uh, they celebrated 150 years for the Weissman farm already so this is very old and we just recently received this because no one in the family wanted to keep it everybody was getting too old and thought it might disappear this is my grandpa he had a, a garage here in Jefferson he had a bakery and my mother had the beauty shop which is over here my mother graduated in 1925 she had to go to Illinois to get her license and she graduated at age 18 
and she had to hire a manager for her shop before she could take it over till she turned 21. This is an 1853 original newspaper from the Jeffersonian, which turned into the Jefferson Banner eventually. And uh, this was given to us by Horace Burry, or Mrs. Horace Burry, and they used to be the managers of the Jefferson Banner, which of course is extinct. This is our ladies and gents room. That means anything that we try to get that pertains to women, women fashions. Uh, we have a Rock River Pearl. Jefferson was known for their Rock River Pearls right down here by the dam. People would buy them, have them made into jewelry. Jefferson was one of the uh, areas like, such as Fort Jefferson, Watertown, where they collected the shells and they made buttons out of the shells. If you see the old buttons, you can sort of tell that they were made out of uh, shells. Also over here, and I don't know if you can see that, but we do have a lot of the men's, gents items. And in eight, 1985, uh, Ray Adler, who was one of the founders of Gamikli Kite, I believe, gave us some old lederhosen. So in 1985, they were over 100 years old. They're pretty stiff right now. So I wouldn't want to wear them, but we do have them. And we also have uh, the Kopeg shoes that were made down at um, the shoe factory here in town. And under the arch of the shoes were all little pegs. And they were put in by hand. The guy had to punch a hole, put them in, and pound them. And I believe they said someone in Japan is now going to start making this Kopeg shoe from Copeland Rider. This is the wonderful permanent wave machine. They actually would put a rod on your head, then a chemical pack on it, then they would clamp this on it and turn on the electricity. Now a lot of ladies, my sister and I help with my mother in the beauty shop and then we read it. Um, we actually ran it later and there would be ladies that would have no hair. They'd have an actual welt like this and what happened is sometimes it took up to seven hours to give a perm. So they would get this hot and it would get right on their head and leave us a uh, burn mark. And um, the scar never would let hair grow there again, of course. And they would just stick a piece of wool or something in there to keep it from burning anymore. Because if you, of course, if you took these off, you actually would not be able to have curls in your hair. And if you see the old wiry hairs, that's what this is. I always think of Mrs. Frankenstein, because you always saw her hair all wired up and sort of this is what it did. Now one of our members had one of these machines and after they no longer use a permanent wave machine like this, she did hot dogs for the uh, kids for the picnics and stuff with this machine. This is a wall of all local artists. If you go this way and you go down this way, uh, we had very talented people in Jefferson. And uh, this one is a woodcut by a Patrick Saubert Wetzel. And in 1917 and 1980, 1918, she studied in Paris and she did an exposition. So this is actually one of those woodcuts that she did. But these are all local artists all around the area. Some of these prints here came back to Jefferson because from California. The girl had commissioned these pictures uh, from a teacher. Her name was Ruth Schold and this is one of her pictures. But she had this one here and this one here and she sent them back to Jefferson because she is older than I am and she didn't want them to get lost. So they send stuff to us to preserve them. This is our war room and our music room, as you can see. Uh, this picture and this little um, haversack I took to the road show in Madison because we didn't know anything about them and we couldn't find anything. This is a picture of Theodore Prentice and we don't know how he came into our history. We still haven't found where he's associated, but we found this in the basement of the museum when it was up to the skating rink and it was covered with spider droppings and a man by the name of uh, Ron Kiesling took it home and cleaned it up for us. He was an amateur artist also. 
And I took that into the road show and they said they had no, could not prove that this um, Brooks, who was the artist of this picture, that he ever came to Wisconsin, but they did have proof that he was in Michigan and he died in California. So I'm assuming he had to come through here sometime or another. And, but we don't know why we have it. A lot of the history is lost. Everything was written in books and just handwritten in the books when somebody gave it with the history of it. And while some of the books were being recopied, there was a fire and they lost the history of some of these items. So unless someone comes forward and tells us that yes, indeed, they gave this item, we don't know where a lot of this came from. And so this is the red brick main street uh, in the historical society or for the city of Jefferson. If you come out our main entrance, you'll see red brick and it goes up and along the street on Milwaukee Street and that is all preserved by the city. So if they have to dig that up, they have to replace that. So we have some of the red brick left. This is actually the Stoppenbach block, which was the old opera house. And in 19, or 2009, I'm sorry, uh, Tyson came and said, we have this old Stoppenbach thing, do you want it? And we actually found that it was in the upper, upper, upper point of the opera house, which was a three-story opera house at that time. It had businesses on the main level, on the second level was um, professional people, dentists, doctors, lawyers, and on the third floor was the opera house. They brought this over with a forklift and just put the pipes down and rolled that in. This weighs over 500 pounds. And thanks to Tyson, they just put it up against the wall. My husband attached it so it wouldn't fall on anybody. We're trying to find the right place for it, but you know, this has to be, uh, since it was out, it has to be surfaced or sealed every year if you put it out in the public. So it ended up in here. If you'll notice on some of our showcases, there will be a plaque. And those plaques are from people that donated the money so that we could put a show place area in with their family name on it. This is all Gamikli Kite on the bottom. This here farm animal came from Marlene Pitzner Brunner. And these are her animals and we keep these up because when the kids come through we show them that there used to be rubber and metal and then the wars came and you couldn't get rubber and metal. One year during the war they only could do cardboard. So we keep these up, they're chalk. Of course this is the start of plastics that became in, uh, they called them composition. They came in during the war years to be making the toys. Over here, we have business people, uh, politicians. This is the Trainman's Hotel. I don't know that you can see that, but that's almost intact. That's right down around the corner here, right across from the railroad station. Um, of course, here's a picture of Teddy Roosevelt in 1910, came for a whistle stop. These are all things, this, this particular plate came from somebody out in California. And it's from the St. John's Lutheran Church, and they said, we don't want this to get lost, please preserve it for us. Over in this case are all the schools, items from the schools, different items from the school. The kids always get a kick out of it. I always put this out, and I always put these dance cards out. And I say, how many here to prom? Oh yeah, they all know their sisters and brothers went to prom. I said, did you know that they couldn't dance with that same person they took? They had to sign up if you wanted to dance for a person. So that's what the dance cards are all about. And these, of course, are all the old church buildings and pictures and schools. They're all in here. We recently uh, received from L.A. Kramer from the old safari building. Upstairs was where the Odd Fellows met. And the Odd Fellows came when they closed, I don't know how many years ago, 19, maybe 1950s. They stopped the organization in Jefferson. And so some of the Oddfellow stuff were gone, but they left a lot of things up there. And we found the records from 1848 and on of, of the Oddfellows here in Jefferson. So that's sort of an important item that we received. And we are going back in the spring to get to retrieve more items. Uh, there are uniforms up there. They all wore costumes. It was a secretive organization but a fraternal organization. 
So uh, we have medals and different items. They're just wonderful to look at. And of course, all the names in 1848 would be the names that we know of our early history of Jefferson. A benefactor of the Jefferson Historical Society was Irina Henry Beanfang. And she was the one that had the hemlock that was a cornhouse hemlock, and she didn't want that to get damaged anyway, maybe mildew or anything from the skating rink. So she said, when you get a chance to get into a better building, I will help you out. And she did. She remembered her and us in her will were one of her benefactors. So this room uh, was not here and it was done from Urena Henry Beanfang. So this is a called uh, Urena Henry Beanfang Theater. And this display will change now in a month or two months and we do that all year long so that we can sort of specialize certain items and uh, we are very grateful to her. Recently we lost our dear historian who was Elmer Waldman a lot of you don't know him as Elmer, you probably know him as Sonny. But in the last few years he has been Elmer Waldman. He and his wife Judy have read all the old newspapers, the Jeffersonians, they have gone into history books, and the Daily Jefferson County Union. And they did a D, uh, CD for us with all the history that they found. Once they found all this history and gave it to us, then they decided, well, we don't have all the history. So now for the last two years, they have been re-editing the newspapers. So it's just a wealth of information. People call us if we don't know what to find or where to find the information, what it is. We called Elmer at the Waldman Shoe Store. And he was always there in the afternoons and many people brought items for him to photocopy. So we have a pictures on the CDs, all, a lot of old history, and of course in the front hallway where you enter our building, you will see the buildings that Judy and Elmer made. They, I always have to say Judy because she helped get all the lumber and the supplies for the buildings. Elmer actually built the buildings. He came to me one day and he said, why do I have a door and two windows in the basement under Highway 26? Did they build up Highway 26 that high? No, there were businesses down there and everybody had businesses in their lower level. So I showed Elmer where the microfilm machine was at the library and how to look up the reels and the rest is history as they say. A wonderful job, Elmer will be missed terribly and I, I hope someone decides to carry on.